evening. Welcome to the Department Degree Distribution Program of the Department of Applied Mechanics of Indian Institute of Technology, Madras. I invite Professor M. S. Shivakumar, Head of the Department, to kindly deliver the Department Report for the academic year 2020-21. Good evening. Chief Guest Dr. Prakash Keshavaya, graduates, fellow faculty and staff members, students, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to the degree distribution program of the Department of Applied Mechanics as a part of the 58th convocation of IIT Madras. The Department of Applied Mechanics has been in existence since 1959, the oldest unique and special among the departments in all IITs. We are currently a department with 30 faculty members and 10 technical and administrative staff members. The department focuses on activities in interdisciplinary areas related to biomedical engineering, biological and bio-inspired systems, fluid mechanics and solid mechanics. The department is offering three M.Tech programs, namely computational and experimental mechanics, biomedical engineering, and clinical engineering. Clinical engineering is a new addition to our department with about 16 M.Tech students registered this academic year. Currently, 51 M.Tech students, 81 M.S. scholars, and 220 Ph.D. scholars are on roll. I am happy to inform you that we will be awarding degrees to 15 M.Tech students 11 MS scholars and 14 PhD scholars. Our department boasts of graduating the highest number of the highest degree per faculty in the institute. I would also like to bring to your attention that our faculty members are drawn from backgrounds ranging from mechanical engineering, civil engineering, chemical engineering, electrical and electronics engineering, biomedical engineering, aerospace engineering, physics, etc. It naturally brings in the interdisciplinary engineering mix and therefore the nature of our department. In fact, the 30 odd labs and common facilities we have reflects such a nature. Recent additions are energy and emissions lab, multi-scale mechanics lab, soft matter mechanics lab, flow instabilities on complex fluids lab, micro and nanoscale transport lab, human in loop, cyber physical systems lab, etc. A high strain rate measurement facility named HREAM is a new addition to our common facilities in the department. In our pursuit of excellence, the department has continued to intensify its research activities in terms of quality and reliance, collaborations with industry and foreign universities, and fostering entrepreneurship. The Applied Mechanics Fraternity at IITM has received several distinctions and awards in recognition of their work and contributions. Our faculty members compete with leading labs around the globe. In the past few years, our faculty members, research scholars and project staff of our department have reported their research findings via close to 100 journal publications and has been consistent year after year. This in spite of current pandemic that has prevented many of our research scholars from accessing labs and spending dedicated time on campus. Our faculty and staff families also had to go through immense struggles and some even lost their near and dear. We also lost one of our scholars. Many of our faculty members are in the editorial boards of various international refereed journals, including Journal of Strain, Journal of Optics and Laser in Engineering, Geomechanics and Geophysics for Geoenergy and Georesources, Sadhana, Computer Modeling in Engineering and Sciences, International Journal of Computer Methods in Engineering Science, etc. Professor Mahesh is Associate Editor of International Journal of Spray and Combustion Dynamics. Professor Manivannan is Associate Editor of several journals such as Springer Nature Journal of Medicine, Biological Engineering and Computers, 
Journal of Frontiers in Virtual Reality and Journal of Frontiers in Robotics and AI. Professor Farooq Ali is Associate uh, Editor of Dynamical Systems, Measurements and Control and Professor Araki Rajan is Associate Editor of IEEE's Journal of Micro and Smart Systems. Our faculty also sit on various national boards that foster quality research and nation building. Panels of DST, ARDB, selection committees in various universities, national labs and corporates to name a few. In the recent past, our department has received several sponsored research projects worth more than 12 crores. Various private and government organizations have awarded these projects. These include MHRD, DST, DBT, ISRO, ARDB, Philips Electronics, Apollo Tires, Verizon, etc. Several of our colleagues are coordinating major national projects and initiatives such as Imprint, Uchattar Avishkar Yojana, Make in India and Startup Grants. Faculty members have also been engaged in several industrial consultancies. The Department of Applied Mechanics leads the institute in translational aspects of research. In the last year alone, faculty members have fi filed five patents of which one has already been awarded. Our colleague Dr. Satya Seshadri is actively involved in Nirman, a startup nursery on the campus. Thanks to the active drive by the Gopalakrishnan Deshpande Center, several of our faculty members and their research scholars have participated in the eight-week incubate entrepreneurship training program and have benefited from the same. Now, our colleagues have already developed their ideas and innovations in the form of more than a dozen startups currently operating out of IITM Research Park. Our faculty members are also actively engaged in a large number of Center for Excellence projects in the institute, such as medical device regulations and standards, virtual reality and aptics, complex systems and dynamics group, materials and manufacturing for future mobility, correlative microscopy, advanced gas turbine engine technologies, microgrid technologies, atmospheric and climate sciences, geophysical flows, micro and nano biofluidetics, subsurface mechanics and geoenergy, sports data analytics, responsive soft materials and molecular materials. Dr. Babji Srinivasan has also recently joined our department as an associate professor. Dr. Anil Kumar Bajaj, a professor in the School of Mechanical Engineering, Purdue University, was appointed Arkad Ramachandran Visiting Chair Professor of our department. Faculty members of the department are also involved in joint degree programs with the University of Melbourne and Swinburne University in Australia, NTU Singapore and Aachen Tech University, Germany. Many more are on the anvil. We have on roll as many as 12 adjunct faculty members from all over the world engaged in collaborative work with our permanent faculty uh, colleagues and our co-guides of our scholars. As a part of our outreach efforts and knowledge dissemination to the wider academic community of our country, our colleagues have organized several short-term courses and training programs in the last year. The Social Responsibility Initiative by our faculty, Dr. Pijush Ghosh, on Teach to Learn, aims to inculcate scientific thinking and the hands-on training. It was very well deserved by rural school students. Professor Satya Seshadri is actively involved in using technology-led inter interventions to support farm income. He works with agencies such as Murugappa Chettiya Research Center, M MCRC, to support the establishment of rural local energy system consisting of solar LED lighting, water pump, micro cold storage and drying, etc. He is currently working with a Pondicherry based FPO called Gratitude Farms on the deployment of high efficiency and 
robust solar dryers. These dryers are operated by women self help group and ex servicemen to create a steady income stream from producing value added products such as sun dried tomatoes, ginger powders, etc. Recognizing the importance of holistic learning, our faculty are also engaged in coordinating a large number of curricular courses such as life skills, happiness habits and success, fostering enriching relationships, strategies for professional growth, etc. For which a large number of students show interest, register, attend and benefit from such courses. In the current COVID-19 pandemic scenario, towards the unmet need for rapid and reliable COVID tests, the work done by Dr. Raghavendra Sai and his scholars on the development of novel biosensing techniques at the biosensors lab of our department has been recognized by the DST SERB and Indo-US SNT forum to develop and deploy point of care diagnostic devices. Recently, an applied mechanics data science forum was created to continuously upgrade the data science skills of applied mechanics scholars and faculty. As a part of this, an intensive hands-on workshop on deep learning was conducted to accumulate all forms of data science resources and to identify novel applications of data science in applied mechanics research areas. International workshop on networks and dynamical systems 2021 was held during August 24 to 28 this year on behalf of complex systems group led by Professor Shayan Gupta. Dr. Anubhav Roy was awarded INSA Young Scientist Award and also was recognized by our institute through Young Faculty Recognition Award last year. Our research scholar Devadatta Subudhi was awarded Best Conference Paper Award by IEEE Conference on Biomedical Engineering, Healthcare and Sustainability, while Mr. Divagar, our uh, research scholar, was recognized through GYTY Srishti Award by Bayrak. Sandeep Kaundinya was awarded the CII Prime Minister Research Fellowship Award in 2020. In addition, during the recently held 58th Main Institute Convocation function, Anandu SB and Nijin IS have been awarded Institute Research Award, while Agna Mukherjee was awarded Keshav Ranganath Award. Mr. Anand was awarded the Best Thesis Prize and Arnab Kumar Malik was awarded the Best MS Thesis Prize, both in Biomedical Engineering Research. Both these convocational prizes have come about through the generous contributions by our beloved retired colleague, Professor S. Radhakrishnan. I also wish to mention that our alumni, including those undergraduate alumni who did their BTEC projects in our department, have expressed their love for the department by instituting Ramamurthy Fellowship Award for the faculty members engaged in mechanics and control. In the last year, students of the department have been placed in many companies like Schlumberger, GE, Mahindra Research, Apollo Tires, to name a few. Our alumni are successfully pursuing careers in academia and industry alike, such as faculty members in IITs, NITs, and other universities, and as heads and scientists in R&D labs in India and abroad. On this occasion, on behalf of our faculty, staff and students, I sincerely thank our director and IITM administration for all the generous support extended to us. My special thanks to all my faculty colleagues and technical and administrative staff who constantly are making this happen year after year. I wish all graduates very bright career and successful personal lives. I would urge all graduates to stay connected with our department lifelong. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Shivakumar, for delivering the department 
report for the academic year 2020-21. I now invite Professor Raghavindra Sai to introduce the chief guest, Dr. Prakash Keshavaya. It is my pleasure and an honor to introduce our chief guest, Dr. Prakash Keswaya, who is also a distinguished alumnus from IIT Madras. Dr. Prakash was born in Bangalore and brought up in Mumbai and Chennai. He graduated from IIT Madras in 1967 with a B.Tech degree in Mechanical Engineering. After working for an year, at LNT Mumbai. He left India for postgraduate studies at the University of Minnesota, USA. He received two master's degrees in mechanical engineering and physiology as well as a PhD in the field of biomedical engineering. His research being related to the development of an artificial heart. While Still a PhD candidate, he got married to Ms. Vijaya Keshwaya, a master's degree holder and a lecturer in philosophy at Delhi University. After his PhD, he joined the regional kidney disease program in Minneapolis and his research area changed from the artificial heart to artificial kidney. He worked at RKDP for 15 years during which Mrs. Vijaya and he raised a son and a daughter. He published many research papers and traveled throughout the world to present his research at international conferences and his field of research. He was an adjunct professor at University of Minnesota. In 1988, he decided to take a new challenge and left academia to join a multinational healthcare company, Baxter Healthcare. Though this company was based in Chicago, he was allowed to open his own advanced development research laboratory in Minneapolis to develop advanced dialysis products for the company. He continued to publish research papers and also received several grants and patents in the field of dialysis. Overall, he has more than 130 research papers and 9 patents to his credit. Dr. Prakash is among top 2 percent of the scientists working in nephrology and urology area. In the year 1998, at the age of 53 years, he left his post of vice president of development at the Baxter to return to India for the next phase of his life, Vanaprastha Ashrama. This change was at the behest of his guru Swami Rama of the Himalayas, who had been guiding Dr. Prakash and his family since 1970. Swami Rama had established a charitable hospital and medical college near Dehradun to serve the underprivileged rural inhabitants of the hill regions of Uttarakhand. Without much analysis and discussion, Dr. Prakash and Mrs. Vijaya made a commitment to be honorary volunteers in Swamiji's charitable mission. The first task that Swamiji assigned to Dr. Prakash was to create a dialysis program for the Himalayan hospital. This program is now performing over 25,000 dialysis treatments every year and also has an active kidney transplant program. Dr. Prakash also taught physiology to the first year MBBS students of the medical college for about five years. Because of the lack of research facilities, 
in the rural setting, Dr. Prakash had to totally abandon his research career upon his return to India. After setting up the dialysis program, he also got involved in various areas utilizing his engineering background like campus wide Wi-Fi, smart classrooms, video conferencing, solar heating, solar power generation, etcetera. He also got involved in the administration and is currently the advisor finance to the vice chancellor of Swami Rama Himalayan University which was established in year 2012. Spiritual sadhana has become an important part of the life of Mrs. Vijaya and Dr. Prakash in the Vanaprastha stage of their life. Though it was very difficult, Dr. Prakash and Mrs. Vijaya having left their two children in the US have developed some kind of detachment which is necessary as part of their Vanaprastha stage of their life. Dr. Prakash has authored and edited several books related to Swami Rama and his teachings. He also teaches courses in meditation and philosophy at the Hrishikesh Ashram established by Swami Rama in 1966. Life has been quite fulfilling for Dr. Prakash and Mrs. Vijaya. Having had the professional success and the comforts of the western world, Dr. Prakash and Mrs. Vijaya are content to lead a simple life in the Himalayan foothills of Uttarakhand. Last but not the least, we are very grateful to his contribution in instituting the Perry L. Blackshear Chair in Biomedical Engineering at IIT Madras. Now, may I request Dr. Prakash Keshwaya to address the graduates. Dr. Prakash Keshwaya. A very good day to all of you. Before I begin my address, I'd like to thank Professor Bhaskar Ramurthy, Director IIT Madras, for the kind invitation to distribute degrees to the graduates of the Department of Applied Mechanics. I'd also like to thank Professor S. Ramakrishnan, Professor Shivkumar Srinivasan, and Professor Raghavendra Sai for the honor being bestowed on me. My dear graduates, my congratulations on your successful completion of your course of studies in applied mechanics. Your receiving the degree is a major accomplishment in your life, but it is not the end of your education. Learning is a lifelong process. The degree marks the beginning of a new phase of your life of real education for successful interactions with the world and the people in your life. The most important skill you have developed at IIT is how to think, how to analyze information. In this internet era, information is readily available, but now you need to synthesize various aspects of the information and extrapolate those findings to real life problems that you will encounter in your new careers. So far, you have spent a lot of time acquiring information, but now you have to transform that information into knowledge and in due course, transform that knowledge into wisdom. My address will not deal with applied mechanics or technologies either current or emerging. Instead, I would like to talk to you about how to improve the quality of your lives in the world that you will now be entering. Be a learner all your life. Indulge your curiosity. Do not, I repeat, do not be afraid to explore new avenues and new worlds. Rather, 
than work for multinational companies in boring routine jobs. Become entrepreneurs, creating jobs rather than seeking jobs. The demographic dividend we now enjoy in our country can best be exploited through entrepreneurship that will give our country and our economy a tremendous boost. If you can come up with really good ideas, you will not encounter difficulty in raising the necessary seed money and finances for implementing your ideas. It is fine that you do not have everything figured out. It is time to stop daydreaming and start doing. Learn to enjoy the process of seeking. Learn to enjoy the journey. The most important question in your life should be, how do I make the world a better place? I repeat, how do I make the world a better place? You have nurtured and developed a high IQ. Now you also need to work on developing a high EQ, emotional quotient, empathy for people less fortunate than you, kindness to all, and gratitude for the gifts of providence should be important qualities that will improve the quality of your life. Resentment, hurt, vengeance are all destructive. Learn to forgive. Only then can you be peaceful, happy, and complete. Learn to be humble. Shed the arrogance of being an IITian. Learn to be less self-centered. Learn to doubt your doubts. Be less certain about your beliefs and keep your mind open to new interpretations. Life is often in improvisation and you may need to make things up as you go along. Do not, I emphasize, do not let the voices of others drown out your own inner voice. Be guided by your own conscience. In Shakespeare's play, Hamlet, Plotinus advises his son, This above all, to thine own self be true, and it follows as night follows day. Thou canst not be false to any man. Follow your passion. Money is not everything in life. Do not sacrifice happiness for money. Do what is right and proper. Let your gut feeling guide you. In life, there are bound to be failures. Do not let failures get you down. Do not get dejected. Learn from your failures. Failure is a catalyst for reinvention. It gives clarity and conviction. Pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and go back into the arena to take on new challenges. The poet Longfellow wrote, the lives of great men remind us, we too can make our lives sublime and departing, leave behind us footprints on the sands of time. Unfortunately, corruption has become endemic in our country at all levels, in both the public and private sectors. In Western countries, there is corruption, but at very high levels. The common man is not adversely impacted by this. In our country, the common man encounters corruption at all levels of the bureaucracy. As many of you will, in due course, occupy high levels in both the public and private sectors, my humble request to all of you is to not get mixed up in corrupt ways. Try to weed out corruption in your own limited sphere of activity. Our Prime Minister started the Swachh Bharat campaign. And initially, there was great enthusiasm to implement this at all levels of society. However, now, a few years later, we find ourselves stepping back into our old ways. Even educated people litter the streets and public spaces. We clean ourselves and our homes meticulously but throw our garbage outside our own houses with no thought of the environment we are polluting. We need to be more mindful and set good examples for our neighbors, friends, and in future for our own children. About five 
or six decades ago, we were very frugal and repaired and recycled everything. Newspapers, bottles, clothes, broken gadgets, etc. There was very little garbage to throw out. But now, we too have become a throwaway society. We replace rather than repair. The environmental impact of this paradigm shift is enormous. Learn not to fall into the trap of conspicuous consumption. Learn to downsize and simplify your lives. You do not need a 3,000 square foot home. A well-designed 1,500 square foot home will be adequate for all your needs. You do not need large gas-guzzling SUVs. A smaller, fuel-efficient car will still get you where you need to go. Do not let the extravagance of your neighbors influence your lifestyle and buying choices. As the saying goes, do not try to keep up with the Joneses. Recently, many countries around the world have experienced heavy rains, cloud bursts, and floods. In India, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, and Karnataka have also experienced severe flooding. The specter of global warming is looming large in our lives. All of you have the potential to harness appropriate technologies to reduce pollution, carbon footprints, and global warming. You youngsters have to undo the wrongs of previous generations. If you do not do this, the future of your generation and of succeeding generations will be at stake. The strength of India is a close-knit family structure. The joint family concept is fast disappearing, being replaced by the nuclear family. But despite this, in India, we still enjoy the closeness of cousins, uncles, aunts, grandparents, and other relatives. The shared values of the family will always be the strength of our country. In contrast, in Western societies, loneliness is rampant. There, family members do their own thing, flaunting their independence, initiating more on their rights and shirking their responsibilities to their families and society. How is health maintained in our bodies? Even if every organ of the body is healthy in of itself, if there is lack of coordination between the organs, health will be impaired. If someone throws a stone at you, you instinctively raise your hands to cover and protect your face and head. Your hands know that they belong to the same entity as the face and head. Your heart and lungs are functioning selflessly 24-7 for the well-being of the whole body. All of the cells of the body are completely replaced every seven years. Old cells graciously give way to new cells. The lesson we learn from all this is to work selflessly in cooperation, not in competition, according to our dharma for the good of society as a whole. Then the universe will take care of you. I wish all of you much success ahead, not just in your careers, but in life. May you be happy, healthy, harmonious, and above all, contented. Thank you for your patience. Namaste. Thank you for your inspiring words, sir. I'm confident that our students and graduates will benefit greatly from your words of wisdom. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy, PhD. Saktivel K. Mrityun Jai Singh. Santanam R. Satish SM. Anandu SB. Ashish Mohan. V. Sri Devi. 
ரவி தத்சேனா மதன் குமார் வி குரு சாஹிப் சிங் பாத்தியா அக்னா முகர்ஜி எஸ் சுதர்ஷன் நிஜின் ஐஎஸ் எஸ் ராகுல் மாஸ்டர் ஆஃப் சயின்ஸ் பை ரிசர்ச் எம்எஸ் ஸ்ரவண் குமார் ரெம்மா சுப்ரதீம் சாஹா அரவிந்த் பாலச்சந்திரன் ஹிமான்ஷு மிஸ்ரா அர்ணப் குமார் மல்லிக் கோர்படே அவிஷா அசோக் நீலாத்ரி சேகர் பேரா கல்லூரி மனோகர் தேஜா முக்தாய் மகேஷ் தோம்ரே பட்டேல் ஹிரேன் குமார் சஞ்சய் குமார் ராஜோல்சன் ராஜ் நிர்மல் மாஸ்டர் ஆஃப் டெக்னாலஜி எம்டெக் சௌரப் பாஃப்னா பிரேம்சந்த் ஆர் ஆல்ஃப்ரட் ஃபிலிப் எம்மானுவல் மாப்பில பரம்பில் என் சந்திரராஜசேகர் ரெட்டி மிஸ்திரி ஜிக்னேஷ்குமார் கனாய்லால் செல்வராஜ் எஸ் சிவானி அஜித்குமார் நாயக் தேவேந்திர யாதவ் ரவிக்குமார் வர்மா ஷிண்டே ருஷிகேஷ் பிரவீன் சிவம் சிங் சித்தார்த் குப்தா கார்த்திகேயன் கே சாட்லா ராம்பாபு ஷேக் அசாருதீன் கங்க்ராச்சுலேஷன்ஸ் டு த கிராஜுவன்ஸ் ஆஃப் த இயர் ட்வெண்ட்டி ட்வெண்ட்டி ஒன் தேங்க்ஸ் எவ்ரிபடி ஃபார் பீங் பார்ட் ஆஃப் திஸ் ஈவெண்ட் ஐ ரெக்வெஸ்ட் யூ ஆல் டு கண்டினியூ டு ஸ்டே ஆன் ஃபார் த லைவ் இன்ட்ராக்ஷன் வித் த சீஃப் கெஸ்ட் thank you uh, i request everyone to have your video on i'm turning on mine too uh, good afternoon we are now uh, coming to the last leg of the program uh, <clears throat> what i would do is uh, i would request uh, each one of you who wants to interact with the chief guest to first use the reactions uh, tab and raise your hand using that okay and when i call your name you can talk is that okay yes uh, we have professor radha krishnan who has raised his hand professor radha krishnan you can unmute and talk you can unmute and talk okay while uh, while he is trying to figure out uh, uh, dr keshavya i just yes, want sir. to ask you uh, one of the biggest difficulties i face uh, probably i can uh, 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 hello wisdom can oh. you hear me yeah professor radha krishnan go ahead yeah can you hear me yes hello yes uh, can you hear me yes go ahead sir yeah i have a great pleasure in welcoming dr keshavya 
and i would like to tell professor keshavayya that i am one year senior to him in iit madras i see <laughs> <laughs> and i am very happy that he is also into biomedical engineering as i have been in biomedical engineering in iit madras in the department of applied mechanics so i would like to inform professor keshavayya that i joined the department after my graduation in 1966 and retired from the department in 2008 after a 42 years of service in iit madras in department of applied mechanics so i am very happy that professor keshavayya has taken into vanaprastha as per our vedic uh, culture and after all his excellent efforts in the field of uh, engineering in various capacities at very high levels i am really proud that i am associated with him as an alumnus in iit madras so i wish him all the best in his career and may god bless him uh, and uh, he can bless the others junior to him okay. and all of first pray god to keep us healthy all the time thank you sir thank, thank you professor radha krishnan i thank you very much for your good wishes professor thank you Rajesh. sir yeah thank you professor radha krishnan professor mahesh thank you sir good morning uh, prakash good afternoon prakash this is mahesh panchagnala how are you good, just wanted you. to uh, welcome you to the department event and uh, thank you for accepting and uh, to uh, give a wonderful piece of advice to our graduates and i'm sure they will cherish it for a long time uh, so the points you made are really uh, what they needed to hear and uh, gives them courage to go try on new things in their lives i think all of us do our part but someone with your world view and with your experience giving them the message uh, reinforces it and means a lot more to them thank you very much sir thanks thank you thank you for your appreciation thank you sure yeah uh, anybody else that uh, keshavya can i ask you a question please, please one of the questions that has been haunting me say uh, uh, i wish to uh, uh, take voluntary retirement and uh, be of more service to the society but there is this fear of uh, you know change that would happen whether i would be ready for it will will that be panning out all right no this this fear haunts and i just stay on and prolong my stay here at iit but you could you could come out of it so there must be some uh, something that has, that would have happened at that time when you made the shift we wish to hear from you about that thank you uh i must say that grace of my guru was very much a large part of my being able to make a successful transition on my part i burnt my bridges behind me i sold my home in minneapolis i resigned my job from baxter because i knew that several others had tried to come back to india and in their first year there are lots of challenges of getting used to a new work ethic a new pace of life a new setting and many get frustrated and go back my relatives were taking bets some gave me 6 months in india some gave me 1 year the longest any relative gave me was 2 years <laughs> but now it's 23 years and i've never looked back it's been a very fulfilling phase of my life and uh, you know we had uh, exhausted a lot of our savings to putting two of our children through private school and ivy league colleges my son graduated from dartmouth my daughter from duke and then from harvard so much of our savings had been uh, used in giving them a good education but somehow we did not worry too much about it and we said the teacher has called us guru has called us and we should respond in my 30 years in the us i tried on three different occasions to come back to india unsuccessfully but with guru's grace the fourth time was successful and i've now been here 23 years i think one should not get too concerned about what the future holds 
you know, if you want to jump into a pool of water, you can put your toe in the water, then your ankle, and then your calf. But it's easier sometimes to take the plunge and just jump into the water. Then you'll find it's not as cold as you thought. So I think just take the plunge. You'll, you'll enjoy it. Okay. Well, thanks. Thanks for your advice. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Yeah. Radhakrishnan has a question. Yeah. Please. Go ahead, sir. Professor Dr. Keshavaya, sir. sir. Yes, sir. Sir, I would like to know how you spend your life in the Himalayas. Can you tell us something more about your stay in the Himalayas? There are doing. Sure. Uh, we, we live in a rural area that's located between Rishikesh and Dehradun. It's covered with uh, fields of sugarcane, rice, and wheat. It's a very rural area. We, when we first came here, we did a lot of exploring of our surroundings. We went on treks. We went to many places of Uttaranchal, the hill regions. But now, our uh, spiritual life has taken a lot of our attention. Swami Rama had once told me, Prakash, the reason you're not successful in your sadhana is because you're putting your sadhana in the gaps of your life. Learn to put your life in the gaps of your sadhana. So now, <laughs> now that's what we are trying to do. We are trying to make sadhana the center point of our life. And all of our activities are put in the gaps of our spiritual sadhana. I still go to my office in the finance department on alternate days. During COVID, most of us were asked to not come every day to the office. So I use that transitional opportunity to make it a permanent thing so that I, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm in my office in the finance department. And even that, I only work in the mornings. My afternoons are free for other things. So reading spiritual books, listening to spiritual videos from missions like Ramakrishna Mission, Chinmaya Mission and others, and doing my own practices of pranayama, meditation, and yoga, these fill up my time very easily. I can never say that I have more than enough time. I'm never at a loss for things to do. And I have authored or edited about uh, 12 books related to Swami Rama's teachings in the last few years. So that has been also a hobby that has kept me active and keeps the brain cells working. I was uh, shocked to find that some of my batchmates are developing Alzheimer's. I visited one of my batchmates in Minnesota and I was shocked to find out that he's having senile dementia. So I think it's very important to keep the brain active and keep doing things. And by doing things, I think one uh, will definitely not have any idle moments. They say the idle brain is a devil's workshop. So I don't want to give the devil any time. <laughs> yeah. so, Satya Seshadri, I mean, he has been very active in uh, the social front. Yeah, uh, great ideas. Go ahead, uh, Professor Satya. On the same topic, uh, I'm very inspired by your bio, uh, Prakash. And I was thinking if there is something we could do uh, to be the squirrel that supports your mission out there. <laughs> your mother, <laughs> mother squirrel. From what I heard, of the achievements of the applied mechanics department, all of the work you people are doing, I'm very impressed. You know, you said you brought in 12 crores of money this year. There have been three patents filed. There have been many research papers. All of that is very impressive. Um, we recently started a foundation called Penn India Foundation. Just two of my colleagues and I, Penn stands not only for the writing instrument, but also acronym for PEN, providing education to the needy. We visited a slum in the winter to distribute warm clothes and blankets. And we found the children were loafing around having no schooling opportunity. So we formed this nonprofit foundation. And now without any fees, we are educating these children, at least undergrad, I mean, uh, UKG and LKG, LKG and UKG so that they can become fit for the first grade in a better school, in a bigger school. So we have also recently leased some land 
and using a prefabricated means, we put up a three room schoolhouse. And we've got about 27 children who have come through our school. And after the COVID restrictions are lifted, we hope to enroll two more batches in the ages of four to six into our school. So that's one activity that uh, has been very fulfilling. Uh, I've also had the opportunity to work for a, to work with a company in Bangalore called Renalix. And the first indigenous dialysis machine has been C marked certified and is now going to be manufactured by Bharat Electronics. They are promised to make 6,000 of these dialysis machines in the next few years. And these machines will be about 35% cheaper than existing German and other machines. And a few years back, I worked with a company in Bombay and we developed a machine that will uh, reuse the artificial kidney, the dialyzer. Normally in Western countries, <coughs> they throw away the dialyzer for single use. The dialyzer in India costs about 700 rupees. We designed a machine that can clean the dialyzer, test it for leaks and uh, clotted fibers, and then fill it with disinfectant and put it on the shelf to be used again the next time. So we're able to get 12 uses with the 700 rupee device instead of throwing it away after a single use. And this can be done in just 12 minutes. Two dialyzers can be cleaned in 12 minutes on this machine. And there are about 900 of these machines in the country used by Max Hospitals, Apollo, uh, All India Institute and so on. And the royalties that uh, I was able to negotiate with the company, have now gone back to help a hospital in terms of treating poor patients. We have a poor patient and sadhu fund. And so some of these royalties have gone into those funds. So these are the kind of things that have kept me occupied and uh, feeling that life in India can be very fulfilling. There are many more challenges in India than living in a comfortable Western country, which I did for many years but I'm very happy that I got the opportunity to come back. Yeah. Others? Uh, anybody else, Professor Radhan? Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, during the launch of uh, the Perry Blackshare chat, Professor, uh, this, you gave a talk, and I remember uh, you mentioning how Two important people have had an uh, impact on your uh, thinking. One was your uh, advisor, other was Swami Rama. Uh, these, these two people come from two different dimensions. I mean, I have already heard the talk and I really enjoyed I requested to just fill in for the benefit of the graduates uh, about how these two individuals coming from two different dimensions, you know, inspired you to in, in, your, in your own pursuits. Sure. Um, when I first went to the University of Minnesota, my desire was to do solar energy research. I had read some papers from the University of Minnesota, and in fourth year of the BTEC, we had built a parabolic solar reflector. We could produce steam from tap water. So I was very excited about solar energy and its potential for a country like India, which has more than 300 days of sunshine, even in Uttarakhand. So I went to university for solar energy research, but the advisor I chose, the head of the department, Professor Jordan, told me very quickly that there was no money to fund solar energy. All the funds had dried up. And Professor Blackshear, a biomedical engineer, had a very uh, good grant from FDA and NIH to develop the left heart ventricular assist device. And he was very kind to give me a half-time research assistantship. And this is what got me into biomedical engineering, which has been a great part of my life. And Professor Blackshear was a very hands-off advisor. He did not look over your shoulder. He did not micromanage your research. He gave me a free hand. And he really provided a lot of opportunities for me to grow. And uh, he even, while I was still a PhD student, he allowed me to travel to Australia to present a paper at university expense. And that also allowed me to meet 
my wife and we decided to get married. So the trip to Australia took care of uh, my uh, meeting my fiance as well. So mm -hmm. Professor Blackshear was a very, very open individual. He was very casual in his approach. He would wear flip-flops to the office. He would invite you to his office to share a cup of tea with him. So he was a very well-respected researcher, not only in biomedical engineering, but also in uh, thermodynamics and combustion engineering. And so being a part of his lab was a big start of my career in biomedical engineering. Around the same time, I met my Guru Swami Rama, who came to give a lecture at the University of Minnesota. And uh, it took me a year to realize what a wonderful, unique human being he was. He was somebody who was a yogi par excellence, a humanitarian, an author, a teacher. And he really taught me how to make more of my life. He told me that you're a citizen of two worlds, the inner world and the outer world. You need, how, you need to learn how to balance both worlds. You need to make progress in the outer world in terms of your career and feeding your family and being a provider. But you also need to take care of the inner world. You learn how to take care of your emotions, take care of all the negativity in your life. You have to learn to think positively. So he taught me how to breathe, how to sit right, how to practice yoga and how to meditate. And that inner journey has been a very fulfilling part of my life. So by combining my progress in biomedical engineering with Professor Blackshear and having the guidance of Swami Rama for the inner journey made my life more complete. Very nice. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I, one, one thing I must mention, uh, when the awards were being mentioned, I noticed that there was a awardee in the department for the Keshav Ranganath uh, Researcher Award. And I'm happy to tell you that uh, Keshav Ranganath Award is named after my father. Oh, okay. okay. And my, my father-in-law, who was Ranganath. I see. Oh. Okay, okay. I Ranganath was a researcher who even had a paper published in Nature. And my father provided me the means to become a researcher. So I decided to name the research award after okay, okay. these two members or mentors of my life. So I'm very glad to see somebody in applied mechanics has received the award this year. Thanks a lot, sir. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know else before I ask Professor Radhakrishnan. Okay, Professor Radhakrishnan, go ahead. Why? Well, like sorry, have... sorry to interrupt. I have to request Dr. Keshav whenever he comes to Chennai to visit the Department of Applied Mechanics and give a talk on biomedical engineering on his work and will motivate the students to do some uh, good biomedical work in India. And yes. another thing I would request Dr. Keshav is to talk to our retired senior faculty through the faculty association and talk about his Vana Prastha life. Okay. <laughs> once, once the COVID dust settles, I'll be glad to come to Chennai again. It's been a yeah. few years since and, I visited. And when you come to Chennai, we also wish to hear from you about the inner journey and how we can take up uh, the inner journey in a, in a more balanced way. I'll be very happy to do that. Thank you for the kind invitation. In fact, uh, I have not seen it. I've not seen any students. Are they also listening to this uh, interaction? Yeah, yeah, they are there. Uh, okay. Students, graduates, any, anything you wish to share, ask questions, please go ahead. Now you're scholars, all, uh, you're scholars. all scholars, uh, doctoral scholars. <laughs> go ahead. I just move. I see that my battery is low, so I'll just move to where I can keep it charged. So, sure, sure. excuse me for just sure. a minute. Sure, sure.
Okay, I'm back in business. Yeah. Go ahead, just raise your hand so that uh, you can ask the question. Okay, uh, while, you're, while you people are thinking, I request uh, Professor Ramakrishnan to Yes. Uh, professor, uh, Professor Kesu, yeah? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, so, I can hear you. <laughs> Thank you for a nice uh, stage, you know. I was, uh, it was very nice, you know, I visited your, uh, your home with my family a couple of years back, you are this stage. Ever yes, since, uh, I remember you. <laughs> ever since I started envying your uh, current responsibilities in lifetime. So, uh, so, but I have, I want to tell you the, here in the uh, institute, we are establishing a center for uh, medical device regulations and standards. So, such thoughts uh, are not happening in an uh, institute uh -huh. level anywhere in the world, but we are trying to do it now. Uh, so what is your current opinion on uh, uh, current Indian medical device standards and regulations? Do you think that it is on par with that what we need to do? Uh, I don't know, my, either my internet was not very stable or yours, but uh, your voice broke up. You were asking about uh, Indian standards for medical equipment? Exactly, yeah. Well, how do you compare it with ah, person? I'm sorry. I think we're still very lax in how medical devices are being developed in India. And we don't have something like the FDA monitoring the development of these devices. And very often, if you know somebody, you can get things passed. But I think many Indian manufacturers are relying on Western standards like TUF, the German TUF standard and the CE mark. And by getting the CE marking, they not only can uh, market the device outside the country, but they also give it some authenticity of certification. So I think it's important to get a device tested for either CE marking or TOEF standards or one of the American standards. Yeah. Uh, but I'm not very uh, closely associated with this aspect of device uh, certification. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Professor. Like, uh, yeah. any, anyone else who wishes to? Professor Srinivasan from the R2D2 lab. Is she also part of applied mechanics? Chris, uh, no, she's from mechanical engineering. No. She Sujata has developed the. Sujata Srinivasan? Mechanical yeah, okay. she's, in, she's a mechanical engineer. Okay, I was sort of uh, peripherally involved with the standing wheelchair. Oh, okay. That she developed. <laughs> so, um, one of her students who was very close to completing it were, ran out of funds. I think he needed salary support and she sort of approached me and we were able to get the product finally to market and now it's uh, being marketed by a good manufacturer. So I was very happy to be involved in that uh, project as well. Nice to yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Thanks, uh, Professor Keshavia. Uh, it was very nice interacting with you. We look forward to meeting you here uh, in Chennai. I'm, I'm hoping uh, that uh, it happens very soon. Uh, thanks all graduates uh, to be in this interaction session and uh, faculty uh, colleagues, uh, in, including the retired faculty who has, who has joined us today. Thanks a lot. Have a good Thank evening. You. I really appreciate the opportunity to be a part of this program. <laughs> Thank you. Thank I look you, sir. Forward, I look forward to being there in Chennai, maybe next year. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So with this, uh, we end this program. Thank you. Thank, thank you, sir.
Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Keshav. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you.